On this episode of the podcast, I'm joined by five-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion Bernardo Faria. Uh, we talk his uh, greatest moments in Jiu-Jitsu, training, um, what he's up to now uh, with seminars, his website, um, just a super nice guy, really knowledgeable, um, very successful Jiu-Jitsu player. Um, can't wait for you guys to hear it. Stick around. Man, I'm good, and you? Good, good. Just got done training today, actually. Uh, you oh, been? Cool. Uh, how's it going with you? Man, everything good. I'm I'm training a little harder right now. My chest is better. I I got hurt my chest. Yeah, I remember you hurt your pack. Yeah. So it's kind of like ninety percent, so I can train. What are but, you been doing to heal it? Anything uh, in particular to heal it? Physical therapy in the beginning, yeah. and I made it a little stronger. And now I feel like it's almost normal. I'm not even doing yeah. physical therapy anymore. What'd you do? Just like strengthening, stretching? Man, in the beginning, I mean, like he gave me some. He gave me some exercise, very easy to do. That there was no, almost no weights involved. This and right. that. And then I started doing like a kind of like lifting weights, but not going too heavy. And then I started putting some weight, this and that. Once I felt it was kind of like close to the mm -hmm. other side, I stopped doing because I'm not doing too much physical conditioning right now because, man, I'm trying to take this six months that I have now. Mm -hmm. Kind of as a break, I'm training also a day just to try to get the motivation again for next year. What do you? What's the next tournament you're getting ready for? Man, might be only next year, maybe the Pan Ams. Or so. Pan Ams. Oh, since I started competing in 2001, I never had a break, you know, so right. of competing and doing that. So this second semester, I'm trying to have a normal life for a while. You know? Right. Are you, uh, what, what was the last tournament you did? Yeah, it was the words. Did you get in, is that where you got injured? Yes. Oh, you did? Yeah, I tore my back there. Yeah, I just did the Master World in Vegas. Oh, man, how was it? Oh, not good. I got, I lost first round, but, uh. My first time doing a big tournament, yeah. The guy. How, did, how she did? What's that? How did the uh, show? Well, this is what happened. Uh, I was went on the third day, and uh, the guy pulled guard on. The guy was actually uh, ended up getting third. We had fifty-seven people in my division. Holy crap, man! Yeah, he got third. So which what happened was, you uh, are, which belt you are? Purple. Purple. So. Yeah, purple masters one. So he. Oh. Uh, he pulled guard. He's a judo black belt. Pulled guard on me. And he went... I went double under. And I was good. He was going for my neck. Then he let go. Then he pulled my... My gi over my head. So... As soon as the referee pulled it back, said kombat, she pulled... It got me in a triangle. I wasn't ready. Oh, I didn't man. have my grips. I was kind of leaning back, trying to go for his ankle. And then he just kicked right through. No, so, man. That happens. He was good. He's very good. He ended up getting third, but... Um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Well, how did you do in, in the world? Did you, uh, what? Man, this year I got third in the open class. Open class. That's good. Yeah, and I couldn't do my division the next day because I got injured. Oh, okay. So open class was first? Yeah, it's always first. Really? Okay. What's, uh, so you... you... How did the, um, uh, how does Chew? Chew? Yeah, how did he do in the world? He won his first match, uh, on points. Second match, he lost by submission. If he would have won, he, he did good, though. He did good. The guy got him in a uh, loop choke on the second. Oh, my God. But he was, man, he was, he, the guy was good. But then if he would have won, he would have won again. Hapa Lovato Jr. Oh, okay. Hapa Lovato. Lovato was, yeah. He ended up winning. Lovato won his division. Yeah, yeah, so. Oh, my God. So if Chewie would have won his match, his second match would have against, won against uh, Lovato. I got it. But he was good, man. Yeah, and, I have competed against him a bunch yeah, of times. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Salah Hiber, Sh Shanji lost like his first or second match. He lost yeah. early. He was in the same division. Yeah, I forgot the name of the guy, but I saw that. Yeah, and and Salo Hiber, he he won, but he like tore his bicep. Yeah, yeah I saw that too. I was like, oh my god! Yeah. I, was, I was right there by the the tent, like the uh, table, when, yeah, I, after I, he won. 
He couldn't even like, lift his arm. Oh man, yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's crazy. really tough. Man. He's really crazy. Tough, What's yeah. uh, so um, what, so you've been so you're feeling better from your pec, getting better, stronger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And man, how how long have you have you been doing the podcast? Podcast. Um, I started. It's been probably a couple months, not too long. I've only had uh, eight episodes. Cool. But I started kind of because my phys- my background's physical therapy. Cool. So I deal with injuries a lot, you know, at the gym, dealing with people's cool. injuries and stuff. And I was like, man, you know, I got a good perspective. It's hard, man, because your body breaks down. Yeah. It breaks uh, down. Yeah. You know, like, how, how, how old were you when you started training? I was 14. 14. So you've been training yeah, 15 I, I, years. My, my, yeah, my body's falling apart, man. You've, yeah. So so what are you doing now? Like, I, I saw you did, like, a video with is your personal trainer. or uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here you know in Europe, I'm very lucky that I have a personal trainer. Right. That he's he's both his personal training and physical therapy. Right, that's good. That's very that's, good. It's good good yeah. knowledge of of the body. Yeah, uh, his name is Kevin Poretti. Yeah, and I, I started working with him in 2014 when I hurt my knee. Uh huh. Actually, end of 2013, I hurt my knee, and I was ha- I was getting a bunch of injuries because here I was not doing like physical conditioning properly at that right. point when I moved to New York. So I started working with him, and uh, see, man, since I started working with him, I mean, like, every injury I got, I got to recover very quick. Like, right. my chest, for example, when I heard, when I, even when I had a surgery on my meniscus, this and that, okay. when I was very quick, everything came back very quick. Okay. So, yeah, so, so, so and uh, I also do physical conditioning with him, and he pushed me really hard. What, what and, kind of stuff, what do you like to do? What do you feel like works well for your, uh, like, just for... For getting you in, in in shape to compete, or what do you, what do you like to do? What do you feel like helps your jujitsu? Man, I don't like to do physical condition too much. You know, I don't like to do like more than two times per week. You know, okay. Because I believe that the most important part is jujitsu. You know, if we sure. want to become good in jujitsu, have to train jujitsu as much as possible. Sure. But I also believe that uh, if you, physical condition can be on plus, can be a plus. You know. Sure. It can be that that very very little plus. That makes you beat that guy that's kind of like on your level. Of Absolutely. So I like to do physical conditioning twice per week. And uh, I like a lot the approach that uh, Kevin has because he does it twice a week and he shares it in three phases. One phase is strength. The other one is kind of like power. And the last power and speed. And the last one is like specific moves, you know. Okay. So normally the first one is strength, then power and speed, and then we, when it gets close to the tournament, it's like a specific moves, all like very fast, uh-huh. and uh, it has helped me a lot. I mean, like my, I felt like my my conditioning and my skills got better. You know, you feel like your timing is improved, like more, uh, you know, like more explosive. More explosive, and yeah. I was not. I, I was never that type of explosive guy, you know. Right. So, little bit explosive that I can get makes a big difference for me, you know. Yeah, and, I mean, because you uh, play kind of a, a heavy game, you know. But yeah, you, you got an interesting play. game though, because you play like I play a lot of like half guard, like knee shield, a lot of knee shield. So I've been doing a lot of the stuff that you showed, man. It was stuff I do. Like I, I just do it a little better now. And it, it works, you know, because sometimes I get smashed, but no, I got sometimes, it. no, it's good. It was really good. I, I enjoyed it because I try, I'm so not great at the, you know, at the over under pass, but, you know, I get there a lot. So I got I'm, it. I'm working on it. I'm getting, you know, but, I got it. you know, you go with big guys, man, just pull you right over. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah, uh, I have this very specific game, you know, that's it's like, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got this thing, you know where to go. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not the type of guy who is very talented or who knows. Man, I, I enough techniques. you're good at what you do, though. I mean, yeah, there's nobody better that does what you do. and you know. Yeah, I really try to focus on some certain posi- positions instead of focus on yeah. of techniques. Just being good or you try to be good at certain. Well, I think you've already formulated your game to a certain, you know, you already know what your game is. You know, this is the way you play. Yeah, that that that's what I you tried. have to be at a black because I think at a black belt level, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's very you don't see a lot of crazy stuff, man. You see simple, simple moves that people are very good at. 
you know, like your moves, I mean, they're not very complicated, not inverting anything crazy, but man, you're just, when you get in your position, it's, it's, it's hard to get out of. Yeah. You know, that, yeah I, I agree. Yeah. Black belt's pretty much like this, you know, if you do a little mistake. Yeah. You, you don't give them anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. What, what do you think? Um, so what, what got you into jujitsu when you were younger? Is it just something everybody did in Brazil? Yeah, no, I started Jiu Jitsu in 2001 when I was 14. And uh, I did, I probably have heard about Jiu Jitsu, but I didn't know what it was that. And then there was a friend of my brother. I had I have two older brothers. Okay. One of them is like three, three years older than me. And then one of his friends, they used to get together and go to my house and do barbecue, play video games, this yeah. and that. I was 14, they were like 16, 17. And then they always end up like fighting against each other, like just really? keep, no, not like really fighting, you know, just just like playing around, playing around, yeah, wrestling. And, that, and then there was always that small kid that beat everyone, you know. And I was like, man, how how, how he can do that, you know? And uh, then he told me, oh man, I do jujitsu this and that. If you want to start it, uh, if you want to can bring it to my school and introduce it to the teacher. Yeah. Maybe you can start it, isn't that? And then I was like, man, that 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 sounds fun, you know. And then I went there, and then I was very lucky that my first teacher, the one who gave me all my belts, he uh-huh. was super nice guy since the beginning, you know. Since the first day, he looked to me, opened a big smile, and oh, you want to do jiu-jitsu? So I think that's very important, you know, when you start jiu-jitsu to find a place that the environment is very good, that the main instructor is a very nice guy, yeah. you know, because. Uh, Maybe the, the teacher is not even like a great athlete or a great teacher, but man, if he keeps a good environment, you're gonna fall in love with your jiu-jitsu. Right. Yeah, it's gonna figure it out by yourself, you know. So, yeah, I started actually uh, 2007, I think. So it's been about eight eight years I've been training. I was uh, 25 when I started. Cool. So I kind of had a friend that did some wrestling, and he said, "Oh, I go train, do wrestling at this place." So I was like, "Let's go. I'll go." I never wrestled, never did anything, you know, like that. I played soccer growing up. Yeah, played yeah. football. That was it. That's what I, what I played, you yeah. know. And I just, I never wrestled, never got in a fight, anything like that. But I always watched, I watched UFC, you know. When I was 10 years yeah. old, my dad would bring the tapes and stuff. My favorite, I love Hoist Gracie, but Oleg Taktarov. Do you remember Oleg Taktarov? Yeah, UFC uh, 6. Because, uh. I'm Russian originally. He was a Russian guy, so you know, oh man, Oleg Taktar, he won. Yeah. So that's kind of how we started. I started watching. I always would watch it, and I don't know. And for a while, you know, I was. Your first school was Chu Jiu Jitsu. Was that Chu? What's that? Your first school was at Chu. No, no, I started at a place called Highlander MMA, and there was oh. uh, Michael Mike Yanez. Uh huh. He's under uh, Pablo Popovich. Cool, cool. So he was there. We were there. I was there for about. I was a white belt. Actually, I got my green belt under him. He did green belt. He didn't do. He did white belt, no stripes. Upper belt is a green, and then blue. I got it. So I was a green belt. The school closed. I went to uh, where Chewy is. I went there, had my green belt on. They looked at me like I'm crazy because you know green belt for a lot of people, younger <laughs> kids. And so I took my green belt, I put my white belt back on, and, and started training again. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've been at. I mean, Chewy's great, man. He's he's fun. You know what I mean? He's just like he, he he's probably one of the best guys in Louisville. I mean, by by far, yeah. we're probably the best guys in Kentucky. He's I he's great. He has a very good level. I could yeah, he's that. he's good. He's I mean, you know, yeah, I can see. You know, he he knows your shoots very well, and he's strong. At that. Yeah, That's he's just he's he knows, man. It's it's good, but it, it was um. And, it, and also, again, more important than that, man, he's a super nice guy. And yeah. the his school is awesome. You know? So that's what Yeah, I mean, and we train hard, man. You know, everybody, everybody's, everybody comes in. There's a lot of different people, you know. we got lawyers and yeah, physical therapists yeah. and, man, everybody. You know, we had a lot of older guys when you were there. Yeah. But we yeah, have yeah. a lot of younger guys, too, so. Cool, but cool. it was, it was fun. So when did you, uh, when did you decide, like, you want to pursue jiu-jitsu for a career? It was when I when I uh, when I started jiu-jitsu, I was fourteen. Right. Then I got my yellow belt when I was like the end of fourteen, fifteen. 
So then I got my blue belt, 16. Then I did the Brazilian Nationals. I got second. Oh, then wow. next year, I got second in the world as a juvenile. A juvenile, gotcha. And, and then that was the time when you, you, you had to decide if you would do college or, or which college you would do it, this and that. So, and that was the time when I was like, man, I want to do jiu-jitsu for a living. You know? oh, so wow. it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough time to, to take this decision when you were like 17 right. and you were to, then what my did first, your, what my, did your family think? Man, it was tough because uh, I have two brothers. They're older than me. One is doctor. The other oh, one is engineer. Oh, wow. So it was, was like a – was tough, you know, to right. to, to prove to my parents that sure. jiu would be a way of living, you know. Yeah. And then – I, I told them that I would do it. They thought I was crazy, this and that. Then my dad forced me to do college. He was like, okay, but the only thing you got to do is college. And, okay. this and, that. and then uh, I got the action to do civil engineer in my hometown for in the public college. In Brazil, the public colleges are the best ones because you don't pay and it's better. Okay, really? It's for free and free. it's free. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, when I saw this schedule, man, it was class from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I was like, man, how can I train jiu-jitsu doing that? You right. know? And then, man, I, I imagine, like, uh, I did the accent that was, like, maybe, like, I don't know, like, 10,000 people, 100 spots. I was in one of the 100 spots. And then I told my parents <laughs> that I would not do it. Yeah, so you didn't make it. I, I've trained jiu-jitsu enough. <laughs> so what, that, what was, uh, so you did Juvenile uh, World's first Big tournament you did? Yeah, the, and I got second. Okay. And that was the time I was like, man, I can take this serious. And, and then, uh, so then my dad still forced me to do some college. So I did another one. I did business that was much easier. It was like class from 8 to 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of the day. And, uh, yeah, that, that was it. So then I, I, I had like four years. I, in my mind, I was like, man, I have four years to make it happen. That right. is college time. If I do bad in jiu-jitsu, I keep my career that right. I did in the college. If I do well. And then my second year in the college, that was my first year as a purple belt. I won yeah. the open class of the words as a purple. Oh, wow. So then I was like, okay, man, I did the right choice, and I'm going to keep going for this. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Uh, so you just when you won, you kind of felt like, did you think you were going to win? Was there a lot of guys that, yeah, I mean. Kind of, I mean, like, honestly, winning the purple opens might be as hard as winning the black belt <laughs> opens you know really? because, why do you say that man because first because you are purple you are not black belt so you're, you're purple when you are purple you are purple when you are black belt you are black belt. So, okay <laughs> like so uh, they both have the they but man I, nowadays black belts are getting very very crowded as well you know you see a bunch of people sign up this and that sure but uh the old times, black belts brackets were not that crowd, and purple belts were crazy crowd. I right. remember, like when I won the open, uh, I was looking that I won one or two matches where that the guy, one guy didn't show up, the other guy got hurt or whatever. But it was supposed to be seven matches. Oh to win. wow! Yeah, I man, seven matches. It means that there was over sixty-four people. There were probably right. uh, like one hundred people in the brackets. Oh my god! Yeah, pans I, are like that. Pans are huge. Yeah, you know, imagine like a dual division, all kids that all they do is training. Yeah, they don't, you all know, day. So, so that, that have, uh, I was like, okay, man, I'm gonna, this is going to be my, my – the way I'm going to make my living is going to be this because I want this purple open class. So I'm really confident that I can make right. this happen. Did you win at Brown Belt? Did you bring any big tournaments at Brown? I got second in the world. It's funny. I got second towards as a blue belt. I won as a purple. Second as a brown belt. I won as a black one. <laughs> who's uh, who's one of the guys you think's the, the the toughest, the hardest, one of your hardest matches, like the people you've gone against? My toughest match, my my toughest opponent ever was Rodolfo Vieira. What what do you think makes him? What makes him so good, or, or difficult yeah, for you? Unbelievable strong. <laughs> yeah. Of course, very good jujitsu as sure. well. But the strongest guy I ever trained or competed with ever. Yeah. Uh, so you've uh, have usually. What do you think that maybe you need to do to to win to beat them? Anything, you need to change your game. Anything in particular? Nowadays, I think nothing more because he stopped with jiu-jitsu. You know, he's doing MMA. Oh, he is. 
Yeah, he moved yeah. away to MMA, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, he was definitely my toughest Have you ever, ever thought about that? doing MMA? Huh? Oh? You ever think about doing MMA? No, I, no. I mean, I'm 29, you know, and uh, I don't think it would be worth to yeah, yeah. stop doing everything I'm doing to start a new a new sport, you know. So. Right. No, yeah, it is pretty much a new sport. Everybody knows jiu-jitsu now. You know, you got to learn boxing, yeah. kickboxing, wrestling. Yeah, I don't, so. I don't think that it would be worth it. You know, yeah. But... Uh, yeah. What, so, what was one of your like favorite? What's like one of your favorite? Um, well, favorite victories. I mean, one of the, the one of your favorite wins in a tournament. Uh, uh, I I could point like some five or six moments here. One was when I won the purple open class okay. because that was kind of a surprise for me. You know, no one in my home so has had ever got a medal in the words. Okay, Not, never got placed in the words. And then I won the open class as a purple belt. That's one of the toughest belts. Sure. So I was the first one in my home to, to do that. Wow. That that was kind of like impossible for us. You know? So that, that day was very special. And uh, I would say my first world title when I beat Shanji in the finals was my second year as a black belt. Yeah. I was not like really expecting to do that well as in my second year as a black yeah. belt. You know? And uh, I ended up fighting against Shanji, that's like a legend in the sport. Sure, yeah. Up, then, I mean, like, all my Pan Am's Open Class titles were were very special for me because I won the Pan Am's Open Class three times. Yes. I, I think no one ever did that in history. It's not a big deal, but for me... It's, sure it's it is a big deal. deal. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, so I, 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 went, I won... Two of them against Leandro Lowe and one against Braganetto. I mean, for sure, the last year, you know, I mean, like when I won double gold in the Worlds. Yes. I won my division and the Open class. Man, that was the best day of my entire life. Yeah. What did you, what did you think? Uh, Do you think anything got you to that point? Anything in your training that you did different? Or, I mean, you just peaked at the right time? I think it was, uh, I never felt myself that talent you know but i was very very persistent okay. so i think last year was the result of many and many and many years trying you know okay uh, before last year I, I had got second in the open class in 2011 i had got third in 2012 third in 2013 third in 2014 right there, yeah but i was there every year i was there you know? right but then 2015, I won, you know. And then this year, I was feeling great. I won double gold in the Pan Ams. Yeah. That's... For the first time ever, I went to compete one tournament completely without any injury. I was feeling great. <laughs> Tough losing. <laughs> yeah, well, that happens. Do, do you think, uh, do you feel like you're at your peak right now? Like, athletically, do you feel like you're you're, you're at the best? Like, your best jiu-jitsu right now, your best uh, fitness, best health? I'm sure last year it was because it was. The, the risk showed that you know I won double gold in Pan Ams right. and double gold in the words and uh, pretty much tapping all submitting all my matches in the words I didn't I only didn't submit one match and uh, then this year I won double gold in Pan Ams so I, I would say for sure be, between this like year has been successful no I until the, the word I would say between like uh, last year and. The words this year, I think I was in my prime time, you know. And yeah. then, but in the words, the sports are like that, you know. If you are there, you can win or you can lose. I sure, lost. sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't. I've never competed a lot, you know. I, I, I never. I don't know. I never saw myself because I have a full time job and and you know I never competed, you know. But I'm competing more. I did the world. I'm doing the Charlotte Open. Uh, yeah. In three weeks, so I'm I'm just want to see if I can do better, you know, because I didn't do well. I was not happy with my performance, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I mean, like uh, the the competition, of course. Who competes? It's important. You know, you, you want to win. You don't you don't want to sure. lose. But yeah, sure. Jiu Jitsu is much more than that, you know. I mean, sure. like uh, Jiu Jitsu might be a big part of your day. <laughs> I bet you're you're already addictive. <laughs> yeah. My probably many part of her friends are from there, so I mean, like, if you win or if you lose, Monday you gotta work again. Yep, <laughs> you that's do true. Your, 
you you're gonna go Trey. So I mean, try yeah, we, so much. we were kind of talking about Chewie and I were talking about what what's a successful tournament. You know, winning is winning successful or not winning. You know, if you go, I think for me, if I go and I play my game and I do what I wanted to do and I do my best, even if I lose, I'd say it's successful. You know. Cool, but I, I think that's what you have to be because you're not going to win. Every, everybody's going to lose, you know. Yeah, everybody loses. It's just. I think once you do that, for example, I'm, I'm pretty much doing jujitsu for a living. You know? Right. So once you do that, professional, you 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 gotta charge yourself more, you know, because sure. that, that's the way you. That's your work. So you gotta do better than right. you gotta win. You you gotta, you have no chance. You you have to work to win. But I think everyone who does for a hobby, that, that's a good goal, you know, because mm-hmm. you go there, you challenge yourself, you test your jiu-jitsu. And if you win, you won, great. If you lost, man, your life is still the same, you know. So. Sure, yeah, yeah. For you, so, it's, a little more, uh, it's a little more pressure. It's a little more it's, pressure. It's your life, yeah. But yeah. I, I think you've, you know, I think you, I mean, you accomplish a lot more than a lot of people have in jiu-jitsu, you know. It's not, it's not easy at all. It's a hard sport. It's a hard sport. I think it's it's hard. It's cool because it's hard, but having done wrestling or judo or anything like that, man, it's tough to do those sports for hobby, you know? Right. It's much harder than jiu-jitsu. I mean, like, jiu-jitsu is kind of like flow on the ground, yeah. right? So it, it, it's it's tough, but it's I, it's hard to explain. But that's why I, they call this in Portuguese arte suave because... Yeah, gentle But, uh, man, it, wrestling, for example... I train every Wednesday. Every time I go there, I go like, man, gonna hit my body really hard right, right. now. Right. Yeah, so, I think that like at every level, you can do jujitsu at any level, any age. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's where I mean. You can still be effective. You can exactly. still be effective. You know. That's what I'm saying. You know. Right. And it's for me, like you know, I played soccer growing up, but I was like, I don't think I can handle playing soccer when I get older. But I think myself doing jujitsu. If I'm you 50, can't. 40, 50, I'm 33, you know, so I'm, I'm up there. I got it. You know, I, I feel like it's something I can do 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and still, you know, enjoy it, be effective, have a good, a good workout, you know? I got it. So, I don't know, man. Um, uh, what I was going to ask you, what's your, what was kind of the, uh, what what made you move to America? What what, what was kind of the thing that, that resulted in that? Yeah, I, I always wanted to live here, you know, uh, First, because I love this country. You know? I, I love the way things work here. You know? yeah. Brazil is sometimes a little mess, and I'm very well organized right, with right. everything I do. You know? So I always like the country here. I came here when I was a kid, just visiting with my parents. Yes. So yes. I, I like here. And then also all the big tournaments moved to America, like Pan Am's words, this and that. Right. And I was like, man, I, I got to move there as well, you know. I think everything is there nowadays for jiu-jitsu. What, what so, made you, um, did anything make you choose uh, Marcelo School? Anything in particular that... What happens was I was I was in Sao Paulo training, and I had this goal that I wanted to move to America at some point. But uh, in Sao Paulo, I had a really tough training, you know. So in my mind, I was like, man, I, I want to move there, but I want to rate wait for the right moment because I, I don't want to move there and go to somewhere that I don't have tough training partners right. that my jiu-jitsu is going to go down. So I'm going to be patient and wait until the right opportunity shows up, you know. Sure. And then one day, Fabio Gurgel, my coach in Sao Paulo, told me that Marcelo Garcia needed a teacher and uh, Fabio made the bridge between me and Marcelo. I knew Marcelo, but I knew like about talking five minutes with him. You know, sure. not that. So then one day, Fabio uh, introduced us, made all the bridge, you know. And then we made a deal that I would go there, stay three months, see what happens, see if I like it, see if he sure. likes it. And man, matched very well, you know. Man, I love Marcellus. Probably like the, as they say, the nicest guy in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I, he's one of the guys I've, I've kind of watched a lot. He's one of the guys I've kind of followed. Uh is it? Do you like? Uh, what well, is there anything particular about Marcel that that you like or that you think stands out? Man, first thing, he's a super nice guy with everyone, you know. That, that and that's how I try to be as well. Yeah. You know? I, I hate those people that treat people different. You know, like oh, this guy, it's uh, 
wealthy or 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 he's a famous, I'm gonna treat him well and that guy that I don't know. So Marcel treats everyone in the same way, exactly as I am with ev- with everyone. I always mm-hmm. try to that's usually too though. Also stepping the mat, everyone is the same and everyone should be treated in the same way. So that's one thing. Man, he he Marcel it's it's very like a correct person, you know. And uh, I always heard about someone that moved here and then they made a partnership with somebody and then the partnership didn't go well because so I, I knew that moving here I would have a person that I can trust on my side. You know? Yeah. And, and Marcel is really like that, you know. We never had any problems about like uh I, I mean like super nice guy, you know, I think. I think that that one of the most important things, or in life, or in jiu-jitsu, or whatever, you know, surround yourself with good people, you know. Right. And uh, uh, staying together with my, Marcel, I think, was a very good step for me here in this country, and very good for my career as well. Right. Well, you, you yeah, you. Uh, you think training with him has made your improved your game? Man, for sure. You know, yeah. I mean. It's it's another style, you know. I was training in Sao Paulo, I was using about those guys, and I over here I started training for his completely another style. It's very hard to find someone who plays the game that Marcel plays. So right. that for sure improved my jiu jitsu a lot, yeah. They, they say he's very strong. Some smaller guys say very strong. Very very strong uh grip, very strong uh submissions. Man, is a is it is a different jiu jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> It's different. It's 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 different because it, most of the people you train with, it's it's kind of like me, you know. My, my game is like, man, I'm gonna try to sweep, then I'm gonna try to pass the guard, then I'm gonna try to maybe get the mods and go for the submission. Sure. I mean, I'm gonna try. I don't mean I'm gonna get this or that. <laughs> Marcel, it's weird because he kind of let you move, you know, and then also move he. He throw you somewhere, he sweep you, he get a submission. So it's very weird. You know? Yeah. It, it's it's different. It's just a different type of game. Different. Yeah, he was he's probably one of my favorite people uh, to watch. You know, yeah, it's, uh, it's the toughest jiu-jitsu I ever trained or fought for. I'm not going to say the toughest guy because, for example, Rodolfo is much stronger, much yeah. better. So it might be tougher. But I'm talking about jiu-jitsu, that, right. that clean jiu-jitsu, you know, the, the one who... That has the very tough guillotine, yes. Very tough axe guard, one leg axe guard, butterfly. And talk about jujitsu, the clean. Right. Marcel. Well, really, I heard he didn't really. He just didn't really do a lot of cross training. He just only trains jujitsu mainly. Man, that, that it's. I mean, that, that's like, all he it's, does. Yeah, it's it's, it's ju- That's why. I, that's why in jujitsu, I never say that something is right or wrong. You know. It's whatever works for you. Exactly, you know? yes. You can never say, oh, don't play this game because it's right or it's wrong. No, man. It's, uh, every single sport, you'll see that the tough, the best athletes, they, they train, they do physical condition, they do this, they do that. In every sport. Marcel doesn't do physical condition right. at all. All he does is jiu-jitsu twice a day. <laughs> so it kind of goes against the theory, you know. But, man, it yeah. works really well for him, you know. Right. And the... Uh, so there, I think there is no right or wrong, you know. It's whatever you gotta test stuff and see what works for you. Sure. If, for example, when I moved to New York, I tried to do what he does, like train twice a day, was working really well, but I was getting a bunch of injuries. You know? Right. So I felt I would need something apart, you know. So, so then I started doing the physical conditioning and the physiotherapy with Kevin, but. Uh, I mean, like, it's unbelievable, you know, he, 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 that's all he does, jiu-jitsu, twice a day, go there and beat everyone. <laughs> Do y'all get a, who's some of your main training partners out there? Uh, I train a lot with the, the Marcel students, you know, the, the ones that, now they are all black belts, but when I moved here, most of them were purple belts. Okay. Very quick, they got black belts because they were doing very well in the tournaments. It's Mateus, Marcos, Manchi, uh, John Satava, Dylan. Dylan, yeah. Yeah. Who else? Uh, 
Then there are many other guys that are really tough that train here for us as well. That are yeah, I heard uh, they, they've got some really good guys out there, and uh, well, you got some of um, oh, uh, who's the guy? Gordon Ryan, all them calling them out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I heard. They're challenging him and stuff. So they're challenging uh, well, that, Marcelo's I, I, team. Yeah, I tried to do. I I mean, like I'd love to see it. Yeah, I. I I respect everyone, and as I as I just said, I think there's no right or wrong. You know, some people try to promote themselves on right. different ways. I'm not here to judge anyone, so I, I don't know if that's the right way or if that's the wrong way. You see, like yeah. Mac Gregor doing that on MMA, right? right. <laughs> For him, working very well, you know. So it's kind of hard to judge, and uh, it's it's even funny because. Uh, one day I was talking with one friend, and uh, he was saying, like, man, in Brazil, when you start challenging and talking bad about other people like this, when they meet in the street, it's dangerous. Or they fight against each other. Right. Here right. in the U.S., they challenge each other, but it's kind of like a, how can I say? It's kind of like a fair play, you know? They, they challenge, they, they right. talk very bad, but then when they meet, they shake hands, they, they talk, so... I mean, like, I, it's I have, different. yeah, it's different. I have, I, I, I don't know even what to say, you know, but, uh, all these guys from John Danher from Helms, they're doing a great job. You know, they, I, I see them. Well, they're, they're uh, New York also, right? Are they they're New in York? New York also. And that, that's good, you know, because then there is like Marcelo students that are very tough. There is the Helms students that are growing up sure. very strong right now. Then there is the unit with the Meow Brothers, this right. and that. So very good CDs, close growing a lot in Jiu Jitsu as well, you know. So Yeah. Who's maybe one of the um, who's one of the guys you looked up to or try to emulate growing up, like as far as jujitsu wise? Man, I think three guys I always looked up and I'm very lucky to be very close to two of them. One was Marcelo. Other one was Fabio Gurgel, my mm-hmm. coach in Sao Paulo. And I always liked Roger Grace a lot as well. Roger, yeah. It, it, what he did was like unbelievable. I mean, like going to the words and tapping everyone with the white belt techniques, you know? Yeah, with, yeah. I saw him still learning the first week of Jiu Jitsu. That, that's great. You know? Yeah, it's awesome. I saw him compete. Uh, There's a tournament in Vegas. I was there for like uh, I was in Vegas. I didn't compete, but I saw him. Was, he had a, like a special match or like a. He man, he's just he looked so good. And he hadn't competed in the gi for like five years. Yeah, I know he unbelievable. Uh, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, very I, very good. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed watching. He's man, he's a. Cr- I think I I told you Henzo Gracie's probably one of my favorite Gracies. I love watching him, man. Cool, man. He, he's cool. just he's just he's just a badass. He'll fight anybody. You know, like yeah. you say, Brazil, he's a true he's Brazilian. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit. He'll fight anybody. You know, anytime. So yeah, yeah he's it's actually the uncle of my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah that's what you said. I remember you telling yeah. So, what did you like? Do you like uh, Kentucky food? Do you like food in Kentucky? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love, New York's I love, got some good food too. Huh? New York's got great food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, here, stuff. There, are, there are restaurants from. All, do you miss, do you miss all Brazilian the, food? I miss, but there are some Brazilian restaurants yeah. here. So I mean, like uh, so when I'm really missing, I go there and then yeah. But of course, I miss like my mom's food, my grandma's sure. food, and those, those things you cannot replace. Do you, you go back to Brazil often? I'm going pretty often, and going like this year, I went January, then I went in July. I'm going November for my brother's marriage. Okay. And I might go for Christmas as well, so I might four times. But normally I go like twice a year or three times. How long of a – is it a long flight to get there? Yeah, it's like nine hours. Nine hours? That's ah, nothing. I just <laughs> – we, we went to the uh, Philippines for vacation. 24 oh. hours. Man, that's tough. 24 – it was like 12 o'clock here in the morning. There's 12 o'clock at night. Just 12 hours is terrible. That would hurt me a lot. <laughs> it took like three days to get you get used to it. It was it was bad. It was bad. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask you. So, are you doing seminars often? Are you doing seminars more often now, more frequently? 
very often. Uh, before the words, I was trying to cut out a little bit to make sure I could focus on training. So I was yeah. doing like once a month. Nowadays, I'm doing like two, three per month. You know, so really? Doing, yeah. Where have you? Where are some of your favorite places? Where have you been? Like some of the nicest places you've been. Favorite places. Man, there are so many places. Uh, I mean, I, I travel a lot in Europe. In Europe. And uh, yeah. U.S. I almost all over U.S. You know, yeah. Like Minnesota, Idaho, Montana. Yeah. Talk about different place, Kentucky. Yeah, I uh, saw a video of you, uh, and when we rolled at our gym, you got everybody at Omoplata. Yeah, I, 30, I, I, I thirty do. Omoplatas in a row. I saw the video. <laughs> no, many times I do that. You know, even to challenge myself a little That's bit. That's terrible. I hate it. I knew what you were doing. Everybody knows what you're doing. You can't stop it. <laughs> it's terrible, man. No, it's all. I, I mean, like uh, every time I'm training or competing with someone different. Yeah, that's the time to test your. So that's what you kind of try new new techniques. Because my training partners, they all know what I'm gonna do. You right. know? So I, I gotta try to do something new. And then when I train with someone that I don't know, I really try to do the, the, the things that I have just to see if it's <laughs> it still works. works. <laughs> That's it. Well, how, how do you, is that a way you, you try to develop new techniques? Is that a way you try to like just to, like how do you try to implement new moves in your in your game? I mean, because you have a set game you play, but is there anything you do to just still build, still kind of build new new wrinkles to your game? Yeah, what I do is I try to keep my ego very low, and I train for the toughest guys on the mats, especially when I'm competing, like, every time, you know. And then I get my ass kicked. <laughs> but, uh, no, but uh, seriously, like, when I when I train a lot of the same guys that are the tough guys, like Marcellus, for example, they catch my game, you know. And then my sure, positions sure. at some point stop working. And then I, I got to come up with something new, you know, or, or if not, every day is... Nothing's gonna work, you know, and that, that, I think that's my way to improve my jiu-jitsu since I started. You know, I was always trying to train with the tough guy. Because for example, if, if I only call like blue belts to train purple, belt, the purple belts are not that tough, this and that. My positions, my my always work, you know. So right. I always, I always try to push myself, train with the guys that are black belts and are competing same level as, as I. And then, I, as much as I train with again with them, more I feel that that my position. I need new positions. Right. You know, I, I, I need to figure yeah. out something new. I need to test something new. And that, I think that's my my laboratory. Yeah, <laughs> to no, true. Something new. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, you're getting? Do you feel like you have a certain way you like to teach now, or, or do you feel like it's constantly evolving, like teaching teaching uh, jujitsu? I, I like a lot to teach my game. But I also try to focus not only on my game, you know, because I, I try to understand that jiu-jitsu, not everything works for everyone. Right. Know, so if I teach only my game, maybe for some people it will work, really work great, but for others, they, they will not adapt. So I always try to teach everything. But of course, focus on the things that I'm best at. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, I, I I don't know why, but many people say that my game is very good for who's getting old. <laughs> right? Yeah, you say that. I, I kind of agree, you know, because uh, I agree like one hundred percent actually, because it's a slow game, you know. So, if- well, I think it's because it doesn't require a lot of uh, dexterity, a lot of like f- excessive flexibility. I mean, it, yeah, like I said, it's a slow game. It's pressure. I agree. I agree. So that 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 that, that matched very well with, with like over thirty forty. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever try any kind of inverted techniques, barambolo? Do you ever play anything like that? It's not for me. It's not, not for you. I, I know the basics. Just know how to teach and to know how to defend it. Right. But uh, it's not for me. You know, I'm not. I'm not that, that guy. <laughs> I'm the old guy game. <laughs> no, well, you're not old yet. You're getting there. I, I can't not do yet. invert stuff and. Uh, I'm not this guy. <laughs> One more year, you're gonna be in the Masters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Are you gonna? You think compete in Master Worlds? Man, I think soon I'm gonna stop competing like at all. You know, because really? 
I'm a very focused person. You know? I like to focus on what, I, what I'm doing and try to do the best at that thing. I think that's how I improved my jiu-jitsu. You know? I pick okay. like four or five techniques and I focus on them and try to become the best on them. You know? I, I don't think if I not focusing competition if I'm going to do well or not. You know? and, uh, so I think very soon I'm going to stop competing and I'm going to focus like 100% on being a good teacher, you know. Okay. A good coach, you know. Is that something you want to, like, you had mentioned, maybe, is there something that eventually you want to do, start your own uh, school or your own gym? Yeah, my problem soon, I might open my school. And I, I don't know exactly when yet, but it might be next year, and I'm thinking about Boston. Right. Is there a reason why you like Boston? I'm doing a bunch of online projects, and uh, most of them... I have one partner that he lives in Boston, so I'm doing a bunch of projects with him. So I put everything together, you know. Right. So, so uh, is there any more tur- any tournaments you're looking for before you before you're done? Any more any more tournaments you want to win? Is there anything I, particular? Yeah, I I don't know when exactly when I'm gonna really like retire of competitions yet. I'm trying to fuel myself, you know, see yeah. until yeah. when my motivation is gonna go. And, uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I never did the ADCC, so I, I, the two times that I got invited, I got hurt and I got injured. Uh-huh. But, uh, so I don't know. But uh, next year, for sure, I'm going to do the words, I think. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. My, my, big, my biggest dream was to win the words open class, and thanks God I got it. Right. And now I have this dream to become like a very no coach as well you know uh-huh. not, not only like a athlete i want to i make a bunch of dvd instructional dvds to, even to to share like the the things i learned right and uh, I, I have this goal but this goal is becoming little by little bigger than my athlete goals you know right well you kind of already accomplished what you set out to do i mean your the main goals and you kind of already accomplished them yeah Kind of, you know. I, we, we always think you can do ma- more, you know. Sure. But, uh, but that, but that's true, you know. But, but uh, I want to one day have like my school, my my competitors as well, and see them doing well. Yeah. It's a pleasure for me to 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 be able to do that at Marcel's and even to see what he does as a coach. Right. But uh, one day I want to have my own as well. So a- ADCC is going to be the what you want to try to win, huh? That's going to be the goal. I don't know. It's uh, it's weird. Okay, I don't even know if I'm gonna get invited. Or not. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I, I was invited last two times. Right? Yeah. Right. No, I think it. You know, I, I think it's a great goal. I, I'd love to at least place in an IBJJ after <laughs> anything. You know, I've done a lot of regionals, like local stuff, but that's cool. that'd be something good to win. Um, all right, Bernard, I'll, I'll let you go, man. Is there a any information where people can get some more uh, information on you, uh, get a hold of you, your website, anything like that? Any, any kind yeah, of I made a blog that uh, it's actually growing a lot, and uh, it's on my website, bernardoforia.com slash blog. And uh, I have my DVDs over there. And uh, also would like to promote here and thanks my true sponsor. I, I made a website, bernardoforia.com, and I have a blog over there that's growing a lot. So right. – uh, Sign up to my le- email list, and uh, everyone can get all my blog posts and free videos, tips. And also, I would like to thank my two sponsors, B- my three sponsors actually, BJJSuperDeals.com, it's a daily deal website, BJJ Fanatics, and uh, Impassable Geese. Yeah, and I, I've I've watched some of your blogs, and they're awesome, man. Good, good information. That's why I saw you and your uh, strength coach, David Perry. David Perry. So yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's good, man. Really knowledgeable guy. It was it was cool to to see and kind of just uh, kind of see what you guys talked about. And um, you got a lot of great great videos, man. And the probably one of the best seminars I've ever been to. So cool. well, thanks so it much. It was awesome, man. It was great, thanks, and, and I appreciate your uh, genuinely seem you know like you said, Marcel is a nice guy. You seem like a really nice guy, man. I mean, I appreciate your time on the podcast, man. It was great. Thank you Thank so much. You. If there's anything I can do, man, uh, if you have any questions for me, you know, let me know. I'm more than happy. To, any injury questions, anything like that, man, I'd love to help you out in any way. Thank you. All right, man. Thank Thanks. you so much. Good luck, okay? Stay healthy. Thanks. Right. See you, Eugene. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thanks, guys, for checking out the podcast. Uh, thank you to my guest, Bernardo Faria. Uh, check out his website, bernardoferia.com. And uh, thanks for uh, listening. And follow me on Twitter at uh, jujitsupt. Um, check out the website, jujitsutherapist.com. And, of course, uh, keep listening to the podcast at uh, the Jiu-Jitsu Therapist Podcast. Um, follow me on iTunes. Uh, appreciate it, guys. And thank you. Thank you.